Hey guys, what's up? It's Carl here, back with another one. And today we're reviewing the brand new Microsoft Surface Laptop Go. I think this might be one of the first units out. And I know Surface products, to me anyways, are slightly confusing in their complete lineup. We have a ton of different products, but generally speaking, their Go line is kind of their budget-friendly line. And the Surface Go 2, which I reviewed earlier in the year, that was the two-in-one hybrid tablet slash laptop. I mentioned that it was a solid iPad competitor, but in the end, I'm not a fan of two-in-one designs. I don't like separate keyboards. I find them a bit clunky, but just in general, I'm more of a fan of a dedicated laptop with an actual keyboard, not to mention that the Surface Go 2 didn't really have a good processor inside. That's kind of where the Surface Laptop Go kind of fits in. This comes in at $550, and when you compare that to other Microsoft Surface laptops, the Surface Laptop 3, that's way more expensive, and it doesn't compromise too much with the internals. We've actually got a decent chipset of the 10th gen Intel Core i5, so it isn't too bad. It does cut a few corners. Let's, of course, take this out of the box first, though, and then kind of go through that. and up slides the box. And just initially off of the box art, you can see it comes in a couple different colorways. This one is in the ice blue. It's actually my personal fave. The Surface Laptop Go up top, user manuals, warranty info, and of course the charging brick. And the nice part, this does use Microsoft Snap charging cable. We can actually see that here over on the IO ports and quickly take in this plastic off. As this is booted up now, we can kind of see the first area in where Microsoft is trying to save a bit of money. So the screen size, it's a 12.4 inch panel with a res of 1536 by 1024. It isn't exactly the sharpest panel, but because the screen size is so small, it's a three by two aspect ratio. It honestly doesn't look too bad here. Maybe when I really start to pixel peep, but just using it as a standard laptop, whether you're watching web content, typing up a couple Word docs, it looks fine on the eyes from this distance at least. And the second thing, which is in the design slash build of the device, and I kind of want to chat about that a bit because when you buy a Surface product, the design of it, it looks gorgeous. The industrial finishing is great. The hinge mechanism is awesome. It feels premium, but the bottom is where they've made the sacrifice. So this is actually made out of a polycarbonate. It's a plastic. But on the flip side here, this is completely made out of aluminum, one piece, as well as the actual trackpad slash keyboard area. All the areas that you actually touch the laptop with your hand, I guess if you're holding it like this, you do feel the plastic on the bottom, but typically this area sits on your lap, hence the kind of name laptop. And I'm completely fine with that. If that helps save a couple hundred bucks from the cost of the device, plus polycarbonate is lighter, this laptop in general is around two and a half pounds, so it's a light, compact, and of course, portable device. And the third area to cut some costs is what's on the inside, and that's where it gets a bit iffy. So I did mention we've got the 10th Gen i5. That's obviously awesome. That's the same spec as found on the Surface Laptop 3. It's the storage options and RAM options, which is kind of the biggest flag. So for the $550 base model, you sadly only get 64 gigs of storage and four gigs of RAM. And for a full Windows device running full, of course, Windows OS, I just don't think that's enough. And for that 64 gig space option, that's sadly only EMMC. If you want to upgrade to a 128 or 256 gig SSD, that's 699 or 899 respectively. And you do get double the RAM at eight gigs. And I get that that base model, $550, that looks super juicy. Honestly, spend the extra money, grab at least the mid-tier spec. The last thing that you'd want is for your device to bog down. That's why I do have the mid-tier spec here. Across the range though, they all do have a front-facing camera and only on the mid and most expensive spec, you actually have a fingerprint sensor on the on and off button. And overall, despite that, I still think you're getting a solid, awesome package with still some really good value. You're getting a full Surface laptop experience. So the build, the design, the form factor, it's got IO ports that most of us actually need. USB-A port, USB-C, and of course a headphone jack. The Surface Keyboard, which has always been one of my favorites, it's got a decent amount of travel on it. And of course the trackpad, a good amount of clickiness, and it's a decent size. And for the people asking about gaming, obviously you're not running AAA titles, Call of Duty at at least 60 frames per second, but we now have access to such great cloud services like CloudX, like Google Stadia. You still get a pretty decent library selection, and I think that casual gamers, someone that would rock the occasional game on the weekend, that's kind of the route that most of us would take anyways. 
The price point kind of competes in the Chromebook space, and I'd honestly kind of look towards a device like this. You get a full operating system, like I mentioned, for students that need to download specific programs, even in the workplace. You might be working through a portal or a specific VPN that you need to download. I know that just having the versatility of Windows is better than Chrome OS in that regard. I can definitely look past the screen resolution not being that high. The plastic bottom, honestly, I never actually noticed that in the time that I've been using it. It's just maybe the space and storage options. At least you still get a full touchscreen display. This literally would have been the perfect laptop if it came at that base level price with of course the 128 slash eight gig combo. Sadly though, I guess we can't have everything, but let me know your thoughts on the Surface Laptop Go. Still definitely a product that I'd recommend or at least put some extra thought into just for the price. Hopefully though, you guys enjoyed this review and let me know what color you end up grabbing. And if you're actually watching this video today, if I can get it out on time, October the 6th, I'm interviewing Ralph Grun, the lead designer of Microsoft who designed this. I'm doing a IG takeover of Microsoft's account, so I'll be asking him all sorts of questions, how he came up with this design, his kind of thoughts and inspiration around this as he has developed the entire Surface line. So I'll be sure to leave some links down below, and if you have any other questions around the Surface Laptop Go, leave them down below in the comments, and I will get back to you. Okay, hope to catch the rest of you in one of my next vids or vlogs. Peace!